Time to spin the wheel of flame. Oh my god. Now I'm still moving. So I don't know when it's going to be, when, it, when it's going to come out, but this is what I'm working on now. I'm actually kind of pumped now because this is, uh, ooh, this is going to be challenging. Okay, I will see y'all later. ever made a show where we're still on the hunt to try to find out what is the worst album ever made it's been a while I've been gone far too long but I am finally glad to be sitting in this chair to bring you season three of our wacky little music show and today I got something that might just pique your interest. Our next contender for W-A-E-M comes from my supporter Selby over on Patreon, who says, in their opinion, the worst album ever made is, in fact, Mersbow's Noise Embryo. another noise album that's all oh, I'm so excited you know I'm really glad to be tackling uh, the noise genre once again on this show because I feel like my coverage on the genre in the past has not been that great uh, I I don't really like my old reviews on the uh, genre because I think it comes off as ignorant, and that's because it was. I feel like I've grown up a lot since, um, you know, Metal Machine music and Av and Nurse with Wound, and I, I feel like now is a, is a good time to retackle the genre with an open mind and an open heart. But before we do, it's time to ask the question. Who is Mersbow? Masami Akita, better known by his alter ego Mersbau, was born in 1956 and grew up in Tokyo, Japan. He originally started life as a musician in 1972, as a drummer in a high school band. Around this time, he would play music that was inspired by popular acts at the time, such as Jimi Hendrix, King Crimson, Cream, and The Velvet Underground. After playing with the band for some time, Akira did not feel a passion for learning traditional instruments, opting instead for experimenting with sounds outside of traditional music, like, for instance, the sound of a chair scraping on the floor. One artist he listened to at this time, he had listened to before in the Velvet Underground. That being Lou Reed, who had just produced a groundbreaking work in the noise genre, and that was 1975's Metal Machine Music, which you might have heard me talk about before. After this period of discovery, Akita made the decision to make music again, but in a new, untraditional way, by making noises with no real instruments involved. With this new way of thinking, he decided to give this project a name, and that name was Mersbau. The name Mersbau comes from the rejected Dada artist known as Kurt Schwitters, who founded the art style called Mers. Mers are abstract collages made entirely of garbage. His collages were both alien and familiar at the same time, which gives each piece a very eerie quality to them. And for those who are interested, I did end up making a Mers myself. Look at that. That's some beautiful garbage. I'm just, I'm just gonna place it right here. And you get, you get to look at that. The act of making something out of nothing really matched the vision Akita was going for. And I think Mersbau is a perfect representation of the project as a whole. And you can even see this Mers influence bleed into Mersbau's album covers, especially with the one here on Noise Embryo itself. 
Other influences that inspire his work outside of MERS includes his dedicated fight for the protection of animals, as he is a member of PETA and a vegan. But since he made this lifestyle change after Noe's embryo was made, the only other influence we might come across is his involvement with the BDSM community. BDSM is an acronym, of course, which I assume stands for Bass Drum, Snare, and Marimba. I think that means he knows a lot of percussionists. Mersbau released his first work in 1980 entitled Fuck Exercise, and has been going strong ever since, and is now considered one of the hallmarks of the noise genre. And as of today, he has released hundreds of albums under the Mersbau name, and of course today, we'll be looking at his 1994 album, Noise Embryo. <laughs> Listen, there's no easy way to say it. Noise Embryo is loud, aggressive, and wild. It has the same energy of a snarling, rabid dog who somehow got trapped inside of an Atari Jaguar. It is... It is crazy. The majority of this album sounds apocalyptic. Like, samples were taken directly from a nuclear hellscape. Like... The whole thing sounds like the world is ending. That's how big it sounds, and it never stops. It's information overload. It's a lot to process. So much so, I think most individuals who are showing this album for the first time won't be able to get past five minutes due to the sheer force the whole piece puts on the listener. Three, two, one. Oh, that is the genre. What's his name? It's just one person? Yeah, Mersbau. He's not okay. What's his name? Mersbau. FBI. <laughs> Mersbau. <laughs> Check into this. So yes, it is harsh. And yes, it will physically hurt your ears to listen to it. But... It's kind of cool. <laughs> I was able to sit through the standard viewing number for the show, which was 15 times. And during those 15 times, I never felt like this was a slog to get through. In fact, I was sitting in this chair with my mouth open, loving every second of it, because it is so wild, and I have never heard anything like this before, and I mean that in a good way. One way I think Noise Embryo really excels at and makes it a more, much more enjoyable experience to, let's say, metal machine music, is texture. I know that might sound weird from like an audio perspective, but I feel like every time I sit down and listen to this album, I feel like I could close my eyes, reach out my hand, and just touch it. I mean, it, it, I, I mean, it probably won't feel good to touch it. I mean, it probably would feel like a rusty cheese grater grinding my fingertips, but it's a wild experience. And while Lou Reed's Metal Machine music does sound like something that you can make with a bunch of feedback and amps, Noise Embryo doesn't sound like that. It sounds more tangible, real. And I think that's really fascinating to me. Noise Embryo clocks in a little bit under an hour and is split into four individual pieces. Uh, I think splitting the pieces at all is a little bit arbitrary since it more or less sounds the same from piece to piece. But I will admit I think the pauses are 
quite nice for me personally. I, it's nice to have a little bit of levity from your hour of chewing tinfoil. Um, but I think Merzbau was being a little sneaky and mischievous with them because as soon as you get comfortable with your pauses, Merzbau is just going to keep coming back harder and louder than he did before. <laughs> say is the biggest highlight off of this album comes from one of the pauses and that is the break between part three and part four. At this point in the album you've already listened to all of the other pauses and each time it just gave you more of the same. Part four subverts your expectations by doing something entirely different. <laughs> Albeit for 15 seconds. <laughs> but was that but were those 15 seconds pretty nice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But there's one part where the it cuts off in one ear. Yeah. I thought I almost went I thought I went down. <laughs> but then it came back. How Noise Embryo ends is rather fitting because it just does. It just shuts itself off as abruptly as it started. And it just leaves the listener sitting in their chair just thinking about the last hour they just endured. The way it ends makes the whole piece seem never ending. Like this whole thing is going to go on infinitely, uh, but we severed our ties to it. Like the, the broadcast was cut short. And I know this might sound a little cheesy, but I do think it gives uh, a little mystical quality to the album as a whole. That little bit of magic that calls out to me to re-listen to it. It might be cheesy to say, but I think I like the ending. <laughs> because it just doesn't have one. <laughs> And that was, ladies and gentlemen, Merzbow's Noise Embryo. A crazy, frightening piece of music. A never-stopping, but always changing monolith of sound. And now that we're done talking about it, it's now time to decide if it belongs on the brand new, for season three, Board of Shame. I see the W has come off. Season, season three is Board of Shame. No more poster board for us, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is solid wood. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. So, does Merzbal's Noise Embryo belong on the brand new Board of Shame? No. It does not. As John Mellencamp would say, this thing hurts so good. There is never a dull moment on this album. It just constantly changes from motif to motif to motif. It is electric. It is exciting. It is alive. And I think it is such a, a wonderful piece of harsh noise to listen to. And yes, there are some moments where it really hurts to listen to. Like, a bunch of static will just keep getting louder and louder and louder, and it will hurt. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're going to listen to it. Uh, but for me personally, those moments are few and far in between. They don't feel like as the peaks of Hello Kitty Suicide Club. They're just small little jabs, little jolts to uh, keep you awake. And for me, I find it exciting. If that sounds bad for you, I would probably skip this one. I think it's really fun, but another thing I recommend is don't work out to this. I was on the elliptical 
while listening to this, it felt like I was being drawn and quartered by a bunch of droids. Uh, <laughs> not fun. Not fun. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of Worst Album Ever Made. Thank you for sticking to the end. And also thank you to all my patrons over at Patreon who, uh, who support me, like Selby, who suggested this album. If you want to suggest an album for The Wheel of Lame, you can do so by pledging $1 a month over at my Patreon. Thank you, stay in school, eat your veggies, and stay for the credits. Cause here they come now. Why, hello everyone. It's time to spin the wheel of lame. Here we go. Oh shit. Alright, I spun the wheel and we landed on Tone's Madhouse. We were so close to McGruff the Crime Dog and Hentai Dude Uwu What's This, so. Did this... is this a bad one? Is this a good one? I guess we're gonna find out!